Greetings from lovely North Wales in the frost and the snow uh, as I welcome you once again to our thoughts for the day from Kimmel Bay Church. We've moved into the Gospel by Dr. Luke now as we approach Christmas and we are thinking today about a man whose name has lived down through the centuries and that man is the Roman uh, Emperor Caesar Augustus and we read in our passage for today which is Luke chapter 2 and the first few verses we read that he'd called a census and then we pick up the story of our friends Joseph and Mary as they uh, obey the law and uh, uh, carry out their duties according to that census. Now this man Caesar Augustus was a remarkable man really he really was a remarkable man i was amazed when i read up about him he uh he he shook up the roman empire really he really um made a difference he was in power for about 40 years 20 of those years before jesus arrived and 20 of those years after jesus uh birth and uh, that, that's the, the, the extent of his reign, really. And, and Roman society, when Caesar Augustus took over, was in chaos, really. Uh, when he took charge, it was lawless and undisciplined. It was broken up as far as the armed forces went. Each kind of region was organized in its own little army, and there were squabbles and fights between them and uh he he um he found a, a a state of total disarray when he took power as the first real emperor of the roman empire he reorganized living conditions he, he reorganized things like communal services such as water services and the like he reorganized administration and taxation uh, systems we see from here that he reorganized the issue of finding out exactly how many people they did have in the Roman Empire by the means of a census, which we have come across here, of course. How many were in the population, not to mention all those things of ordinary life that he did, drainage systems and all that sort of thing. He really made a difference, did this man, to the Roman Empire, to the Roman citizens. He made it more comfortable for the people to live. He introduced things like central heating systems. And we think we're modern, don't we? But uh, he introduced things like systems to heat the, the buildings and all this uh, sort of thing. And, you know, reading about Caesar Augustus and the way um, he uh, affected society and uh, uh, maneuvered, if you like, without realizing it, maneuvered behind the scenes God's purposes if you like because God uses this is the thing I want us to remember from today really God uses men and women sometimes men and women who give him no thought indeed sometimes men and women who are hostile to him and to his cause who but God uses them so often to fulfill his purposes and his plans he is sovereign, he is Lord of all, and he will work his purposes out. Think, just think back over the history, if you like, and think of Pharaoh, how he was used by God, really. Think of Pharaoh, think of Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar. Think of King Darius. And as you come rather more into the New Testament, yes, think of this man, Caesar Augustus, and others like him, really, who were used in the purposes of God. He used, God used this man, Caesar Augustus, to be the person uh, who brought in the means by which Mary and Joseph were in the right place at the right time for the birth of Jesus to uh, come about as per prophecy. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful that God's able to work out his purposes in spite of people sometimes? And uh, he did in this case. Let us never lose sight of the fact that when we think of some of our world leaders, 
And if you stop and think about some of our world leaders, you would perhaps be forgiven for wondering how on earth God uses them in his purposes. Think of the leaders of North Korea, the, need, the leaders of Russia, the, the leaders of China, the leaders of Iran and other places. But yet God can and does work out his purposes, uh, as I say, through them and sometimes in spite of them and uh, brings about uh, those things that he wants to come to pass, as he did here, using Caesar Augustus to be the means whereby P uh, Mary and um, uh, Joseph were in the right place at the right time. God is sovereign. Let us never remember, uh, uh, never forget that. Sorry, never forget that, I should have said. Let us never forget that. There's a verse in the Old Testament, isn't there, that says, Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Praise the Lord, he does do right. He always does right. He never does wrong. He is perfect. He is wonderful. He is the great sovereign God. One day, one day in the final analysis, all his plans will be worked out. Until then, until then, we have time in his mercy for us to ask him to enter our lives with his forgiveness and his salvation. Peter, the Apostle Peter, reminds us in his letter, I think it's his second letter, when people were saying, why aren't these things coming about that you're forecasting and all the rest of it? Why isn't God moving and doing this, that and the other thing? And Peter's answer was because of his mercy, because God really doesn't want anyone to perish. He doesn't want anyone to miss the lovely home in heaven that he's prepared for those who are prepared to come on his terms through his dear son, the Lord Jesus. Let me finish by just quoting to you a lovely hymn from a long time ago. <laughs> if you remember this, it ages you, I think, but this is a lovely hymn. It says this, Whosoever cometh need not delay. Now the door is open. Enter while you may. Jesus is the true, the only living way. Whosoever will may come. Whosoever will, the promise is secure. Whosoever will forever must endure. Whosoever will, tis life forevermore. Whosoever will may come. How wonderful. The Lord bless you. Have a wonderful day as you prepare for this beautiful season of Christmas. Goodbye.